Hello everybody, my name is Gidra, and today I'm going to be doing an update of my League of Legends Optimal Pro Settings Guide. These are going to be the settings that pro players like Faker or Sneaky would use. And let's just get right into it. So press escape, and we're going to start with our hotkeys. I'm going to restore all just so you can see what the defaults look like. First thing you're going to want to do is press quick cast all. This is going to make it so that instead of holding down your uh, spells or like pressing Q and then left clicking to cast it, you'll actually just immediately be able to cast it whenever you hover over something. Next thing we're going to want to do is uncheck replace quick cast with quick cast with uh, range indicator and uh, this one. This makes it so that when you hold down Q until you release the spell, um, it will not cast. This is bad because if you're trying to catch up to somebody and you right click, it's going to cancel your, your spell in favor of the right clicking. By removing this and disabling this, this is true quick casting. So you'll be able to right click and use your spells at the same time. So definitely want to do that. Um, so quick cast, uh, this make sure you press OK um, after you do any changes and you leave the settings menu and now we're going to go to abilities and summoner spells first thing I like to do um, in order I, I like to see my range indicators but I don't want to lose the speed of quick casting so the solution to that is having a normal cast binding and the most common one is going to be shift Q Shift W, Shift E, and Shift R. By having these on a uh, shift, it will enable you to see the range. Like if I hold Shift and press Q, now I have the range indicator. And it won't actually do anything until I left click. So go over here. Now my guy's gonna left click. Um, you can cancel that by pressing, uh, by like uh, right clicking again. But now this is going to give me the range in care, and I'll still be able to just cast it immediately like this. So, cool. Um, I do that for all my spells. I have this uh, on nothing right here. And then quick cast, I'm going to remove or unbind shift F and shift D for summoner spells. They're not needed. Then press OK. And now we're going to go down to... Let's see, quick plus self cast. This is completely a personal preference. If I'm playing champions like Kale or Nidalee though, it's invaluable. Quick plus self cast. Q, uh, W, E, R. So now, um, on a spell like Kale's where she can cast it her heal on herself or an ally, just being able to press W and have it immediately cast onto myself is incredibly handy. So by doing quick plus self cast, whenever you press the spell, or like her ultimate for example, perfect, perfect example. When I press R, it'll immediately cast my invincibility ult on myself, similar to Trindamir, how he would just press R. This is uh, quick casting your spells for, for self casting. So you don't have to press alt, you don't have to have any other key bind, it's just immediately included in the kit. But you'll still be able to cast it on your allies by holding shift uh, and this key holding shift R for my ultimate and then you can either left click your ally or you can actually just hover over them and press the ability it does not work on minions for kills W though but yeah that's that's really useful I really like this a lot because I actually use the default self cast binding which is alt uh, plus the spell for my level up spells so I change control to alt on everything and now when I hold Alt and press Q, it's going to level up. This is going to be great for like winning train, uh, trades. If you and your opponent just hit level 3, for example, the person who immediately like uh, levels up the spell with a simple cast and then uh, starts fighting with it versus the person that goes down here, clicks it to level it up, and then comes back and fights, the person who quick casted uh, their ability to level up is going to win every time. So, I like to have that on that. I think that's pretty much everything here. Oh yeah, uh, take off the Alt F and Alt, Alt D for self-casting. So you're, this is what you're going to want to 
want to do. You want to have shift uh, shift plus abilities for normal cast. Everything else blank. Uh, quick plus self cast is just going to be your basic spells. If you decide you want to have uh, like self cast on control Q or something like that, or alt Q, and you don't mind your spells being level up on control Q or whatever, that's fine. But this is how I set it up. This is what I found to be the most optimal. So I highly encourage you to at least try this out. And that's going to be it for abilities and summoner spells. Next thing we're going to want to do is go into items. Similar to how we did with our spells, we're going to do normal cast um, as well as quick casting. So for trinket, it would be shift uh, four because that's the default button for trinket. Then item one would be shift one, shift two, shift three. On item four, it's going to be shift five because remember we use shift four for the trinket slot. Then shift six and shift seven. So four, five, and six should be five, six, and seven. Press OK to make sure that sticks. And then by default, the trinkets are already being quick cast because you pressed uh, quick cast all up here. And then notice how because I uh, put these on like self, the abilities are now like bound uh, onto that. Uh, let's see, and that's pretty much all you need for items. And I'll show you what it looks like. It, it's pretty much the same. Like I just hold shift and I press like the trinket and they will give me this range indicator. It won't cast the trinket unless I um, left click or I just um, I'm out of the range indicator thing and I just press like four and that will that will cast my trinket. Um, next, we're going to want to go to player movement. Only thing I really like to change here is player attack move. Instead of uh, having it on both X and A, I like to have player attack move click on shift uh, mouse button 2 and then A. Shift right click and A. What this is, is uh, by default, X and A bring up the player attack move. So when you hit X, your player will not move, or they'll, they'll basically attack uh, whatever's in range of them, right? It shows you your attack range and left clicking like commits to that. This is good for face checking bushes, for example. Because uh, if you're if you have an enemy like Rengar, for example, in this bush, by clicking uh, by having the player attack move in the bush and left clicking, as soon as your champion gets vision of them, they will instantly start attacking them in the bush. Extremely useful. Um, but player attack move is so much better than player. Uh, player attack move click is so much better than player attack move because it doesn't actually click the enemy in the bush for example so that's why we would have um, by default it's shift right click or I like to put it on a this is insanely useful for 80 carries who are kiting because I'm just able to like press a right click press a right click press a right click and that will allow me to kite like backwards it's a little hard to do with this huge ass minion wave here, but you can kind of see what I'm talking about if I don't die. But yeah, um, so that that this is going to be great for kiting, orb walking, whatever you want to call it. It does not work on scuttle crab unless you actually like hover over them like this and press A, for example. But still insanely useful, and then you still have the uh, player attack move, the normal one on X, if you decide you... I, I just use this to look at my auto attack range, to be honest. Uh, I see a lot of pro players like actually using this, though. I haven't really figured out what the main reason for using it is. If you want to let me know in the comments, like other than your range, I, I think it would just be much easier to right-click, but that's probably why I'm not a pro player. Uh, anyway, oh yeah, here's a an example of the the ward um, when quick or er, uh, range indicator right there. So that's going to be it for player movement. Now we're going to go to we can pretty much ignore everything on camera control uh, and display toggle FPS. This is really good uh, if you hold Control F, it will show your FPS and ping. Very useful. Uh, communication, me personally, because I don't like using control at all because I have an issue with my uh, pinky, I change this to Alt 1, Alt 2, Alt 3, Alt 4, Alt 5, and then Mastery Emote I actually have on F. Reason being, 
I don't actually use F for flash. I use mouse button down or mouse button four for my flash so that yeah, I just find it so much more useful. Like I can do this and then boom. So I really like having flash on mouse button down. That's personal preference. Um, if you don't want to do that, you can just put this on alt, uh, alt, bleh, alt six, but I like mine like that. And that's it for communication. Go to menus. You can just ignore anything on this. Um, shop, you can ignore that. And we are done with our hotkeys. Moving on to video. This is going to depend on your graphics card. But general rule of thumb is borderless on windowed mode. Use relative team colors. Resolution of your monitor, uh, 1080p being the most optimal. I like to have colorblind mode on because it makes it so that instead of the green health bar, I have this nice yellow. It's contrasting with the blue so I don't mistake it during a team fight. Um, and then it also changes your attack move click reticule from red to orange. And it's also good if you stream so your viewers can like uh, who are colorblind are able to see what's going on. Then we move on to... Uh, frame rate, it's going to be uncapped. Leave these unchecked. Uh, V-Sync is the devil. Character inking, this is if you have like a lower end uh, graphics card, but basically it just puts this like nice little black border around your character so that it's easier to like distinguish your character from the terrain and as well as minions. And then the, this setting right here, uh, hide eye candy, would like make the little bugs and ducks and frogs in the environment go away. Oh, here's one right here. Um, if I click that, it's going to make it disappear. So that just saves a little on rendering power. Um, another general rule of thumb for this one, while this is like dependent on your settings, uh, shadows, I would either leave low or off. Reason being, if you have shadows on very high, for example, it makes them crystal clear, but this uses a lot of rendering power on your graphics card and RAM. We don't want that because we want the most FPS. See how I turned everything up and my FPS went down considerably? If I turn this back on low, my FPS shot up from 80 to 140. And it looks more natural to have it on low or even off. And environment quality, you're going to lose a little of the pretty crystal clearness of this, as you can see. But by having it on high, it's not rendering as much, so it's going to be a little better. Or, I don't know, can, is this going to make a noticeable difference? Not really. But I, I can run the entire game on very high on everything, because I have a really good graphics card and processor. But... I would rather be more optimal. I want those frames per second, so I have this on low. Environment quality, I probably can run on very high. Effects quality, I want on high because, you know, when you're in a team fight and you have 50 billion things on the screen right here and everybody's using their spells and there's 10 people on the map on top of all the jungle monsters, on top of all the minions, on top of all the epic monsters, you know, the this is going to lower your frames per second a lot. So actually, I think I will keep this on high. And character quality, if you look at your character, and then you change it from very high to high, there's almost no distinguishable difference from having this on very high and high. This is what Faker uses. Um, I trust Faker since he's the best player in the world, so that's the settings I use. And then it just makes the most sense if you're in a team fight, this won't lower your frames per second. Um, frame rate uncapped again. I used to have it on 144 because I would lag during the first part of the the game. Uh, or not lag, like I would, if I left clicked right here, my character would jump around the map. That's only because minions haven't spawned yet. Um, your frames per second is actually like at 600 or something ridiculous, 500 when the match first starts, if you're on like good hardware. But after the minions spawn, after you have like 10 minions from each lane and all the jungle monsters and all 10 champions, that's like over 120 units on the map total. That lowers the frames per second by half. So uncapped, um, perceived like smoothness is basically where you're going to be going for. I have a 144 hertz monitor. So um, 
I could just leave this at 144, but uncapped just feels smoother. If you have a 60 hertz monitor, which most of you do, I assume, because that's pretty much the standard, you can cap this at 60 instead of enabling virtual sync because it's the devil. Um, and that will give you a smoother play experience. But uncapped generally is going to be the, the best for everything. So that will be our video settings. If you have a really good machine, your settings are going to look something like this. If you have like a lower end machine, then you want your settings to probably be something like this. Then if you have a really crappy machine, just turn it down. Basically, as long as you can hit 60 frames per second, you can keep increasing the quality until you can no longer hit 60 frames per second. But these right here are my settings. This is what I use. Going over to sound, this is personal preference. I like to leave this at 75 because I stream and I want to hear my team in the background. And then you can actually change the music to like the classic music. Ping volume, I do want at 35 because it's freaking annoying. And then now we're going to go to interface. HUD scale, ideally, if you can like tolerate this at zero, you get so much more map real estate in terms of like uh, when you're going to be able to see an enemy champion coming like right here. See, I, I can see this entire like corner now, whereas when I had this on default, I couldn't. I like to keep it at 35 though. By default, it's at 50, which is way too big. Faker actually plays it on 50. I don't know how he does it. I would have that like super low, but I have it on 35. Chat scale. Um, again, if you can stand it, have this at lower. I like to have it at 40 though, so that I can see like when towers, first blood, all that's taken. Minimap scale, you always want it at 100%. Always, always, always. You should be looking at this every five seconds, ideally. Um, let me see here. Uh, show uh, slows and loss of control UI. We want that enabled. Uh, let's see enable HUD animations if you're like struggling to hit your 60 frames per second You can turn this off. I like to leave it off just because it's kind of distracting and not really like useful at all um, Show health bars screen flash on damage is huge. Yeah, I know AFK screen flash on loss to control This is so that like if you if you do take damage um if you do take damage, you're able to like see it. If you're not looking at your character, your screen will flash red or your screen will flash uh, indicating that you've been crowd controlled. Um, disable HUD spell click. I like to leave this enabled so I don't accidentally click like one of my abilities in the middle of a team fight and like blow my ultimate, for example. Show spell costs. This is so great. Um, this makes it so that you can see when your spell, like how much mana your spells take. Did this change? Damn it. Hold on just a second. There we go. Show summoner names. You want all that. Um, this put on minutes and seconds so that you can like tell your team, Hey, my ult's up in a minute, uh, 16 instead of having to guess like, Oh, uh, it's up in like a minute. Um, mini map on the left is for Starcraft players. If you're used to that, show summoner names. Uh, that's on the scoreboard. So that shows that. I haven't figured out what this setting right here is. Um, show team frames on the left. This is if you're used to the old League of Legends. Instead of uh, your teammates being right here, they'll just be over here. Um, show time stamps in chat so that like if somebody says like re flash That was done at 19 minutes so that I know that um, Let's see five minutes from now So nine so at 24 minutes Ari's flash is going to be back up So that's why you do show time stamps show all chat. Uh, that's personal preference combat text everything except mana should be enabled so with the experience, if you're like really far away and you're in a bush, but you want to soak up experience, you know exactly like how far you can be and still soak up experience. <clears throat> and then if you hover over this, it actually shows you how much experience you need to a level up. So that's really useful. Uh, mana, I don't like on because this just like tells you how much mana you exerted every time you cast a spell. I guess that might be good if you're really like paranoid about how much mana you're using, but I 
just think it's distracting and a useless stat, so I turn that off. Uh, let me see. Did I get enable line missile display? What the fuck? Is that on by default? It's on by default, so whatever. Um, show attack range, show spell cost, show target frame on attack. Yeah, so... Oh, champion highlight center. So if you hold space now, similar to Heroes of the Storm, it will highlight your champion. This is good if you want to, like, maybe break yourself from holding space too much when you're auto-attack, or, like, when you're trying to, like, learn unlock screen for the first time. I just find it distracting because I actually hold space a lot to snap back to my character. Um, never want to play on lock screen. If you're in lock screen like this, press Y, unlock that screen, and get a new lease on life. Um, that's going to be it for the interface settings. Uh, real quick, because I actually did notice it, I gave you the wrong information on the items. I don't use normal cast. I use quick cast with range indicators. So I apologize for that. Real quick, just go back into here and... Uh, oops fix that fuck so um, holding shift gives me the range indicator of it but it doesn't like normal cast because you don't really need to have the the normal cast on the trinkets I just like to be able to see the range and then as soon as I let go it casts so quick cast with range indicator um, for the trinkets or if you prefer uh, you can still do the normal cast. It's, it's totally personal preference. It's up to you um, But that that's what I use um, Quick cast with range indicator for for the items and then on game this is going to be 50 50 uh, Enable auto attack and show turret range and then okay. This is going to be the the reference like mouse speed you want to change your mouse speed in the like DPI level not the computer or the game level this is like perfect the perfect like s speed you know it's just gonna be default I am playing shut up um, camera move speed I like to leave this at 45 so when basically my mouse goes off the screen to move the camera it's a little slower so that I'm not just like jumping around the screen. I find it a little easier to control the camera and my character. Because I'm left handed. One of the most difficult things for me in this game is like controlling my camera. So that uh, that helps me out a little bit. Um, move camera on revive. This is just like, you know how when you're dead and your guy's right here. And then it instantly snaps back. This makes it so that, like, if you have this disabled, your camera will stay there when you respawn. So that, like, you can immediately teleport here instead of having your camera switch back here, having to go back over here. So it saves a little time. Your time has come. Um, per side offset, that's, this is pretty much, you know, pretty much it. This is what I use. And then the last thing you're going to want to do is set your mouse settings for your computer. So I'm going to show you that right now. Alright, so now we're on our desktop and we're just going to change our mouse settings. So we're going to go down here and go to start. And then you'll type in mouse and go to the mouse control panel. And once you're in the mouse control panel or mouse properties, you're going to go over to pointer options and then you want to make sure this is on the sixth tick right here this is going to be a zero acceleration zero deceleration which is what you want so one two three four five six perfect right in the middle there enhanced pointer precision is on by default this is to like help people who aren't really used to using a mouse like just make it feel a little better but this is horrible for gaming this adds uh, just bad things that you don't want so make sure Enhanced pointer precision is turned off. Make sure this is at the reference mouse speed level. And then we're going to go ahead and open our mouse software. In my case, I have a Razer Mamba, so I'm going to open up Razer Synapse. And you're going to go to the Performance tab and set this to 800 DPI. This is the best DPI for 1080p monitors this is what guys in Counter-Strike use it just has the best balance of precision and speed 
You're going to need a bigger mouse pad though, because uh, it is going to like, you're going to need to move your mouse a lot uh, in order to get from the left to the right of the screen. I also have two monitors, so that's why I need a bigger mouse pad, but the control you get is just amazing. Um, because I used to play it like a, whoa, that is, I don't know how people play at these numbers. This is freaking ridiculous. I'm moving it like five inches. Holy shit. That's for like OSU players or something. But yeah, whoa, I can't even get it back here. Um, I used to play at like 1800 DPI and th this is just a gimmick guys. It's really, you don't need it. 800 is where it's at. Uh, I highly encourage you to try it at least for a couple games. See if you're not more consistent. And then after a while, even that starts to feel really fast. Um, but yeah, if you do that, uh, 800 DPI or DPI is where you want. And then no acceleration, 500 polling rate. Um, you don't have to worry about enable surface calibration. That's for Razer mouses, but in general, 800 DPI, 800 DPI setting, 800 DPI mouse will just be great. I, I wouldn't recommend going above any DPI over 1600 because after that, you start to get into pixel skipping, which is what you don't want. The Razer Death Eater and Mamba can actually go to 180 without pixel skipping, which is why they're like... Uh, marketed and sold like that but anyways i'm just rambling about dpi those are going to be the optimal settings for league of legends and what most pro players use and just my like flavor of what i use in there as well hope you guys have enjoyed this tutorial let me know what you'd like to see in the comments in the future and i will see you guys next video